Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God, our Father, through our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, that makes us unable to help but sing. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, no, you cannot help me with this project, but you can sit there and watch me, said my dad to little six-year-old me when I just wanted to help. Well, why not? Why can't I help? I challenged back. To which he said, well, first of all, you'll stick your finger into the light socket. Now, I misheard what he said. Instead of, you'll stick your finger in the light socket, I heard him say, first, you stick your finger into the light socket. And I thought he was giving me the first step, explaining why it was too hard for me to do. But little six-year-old me knew I could do that step. And so I proved it to him. And I stuck my finger right in that socket zap. Now, admittedly, my memory from that point on is a little bit fuzzy. But the way I remember it is I flew off of the counter onto the floor or maybe even into the bathtub beyond. And there I was lying on the ground in pain and in tears, looking up at my dad. And he might have said something different, but this is how I remember it. See, what did I tell you? How well do you follow instructions or directions? Are you the type that pulls out those directions and reads them from cover to cover first, lays out all of the parts carefully before you begin any assembly? Are you one that just jumps right into the project and leaves the instructions aside until you have to use them, if ever you do? Or are you one of those who says instructions are for sissies and you put them through the shredder before you even begin the project? How well do you follow instructions? One day soon, the Lord is going to come back. And he's going to make everything right for you and me. But in the meantime, he asks us to wait. And what do we do while we wait? He tells us, follow my instructions. Over the next three weeks, we're going to take a look at some of those songs of Advent. We'll look at the psalms that have been set aside for the Advent season. This afternoon, we're going to begin with Psalm 25, where the Lord gives us his instructions that he wants us to follow while we wait for him. So let's now read together that psalm responsively as it's found in your worship folder. We read Psalm 25. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. No one whose hope is in you will ever be put to shame, but they will be put to shame who are treacherous without excuse. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are God my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. Remember, O Lord, your great mercy and love. Remember not the sins of my youth and my rebellious ways. According to your love, remember me, for you are good, O Lord. Your good and upright is the Lord, therefore he instructs sinners in his ways. He guides the humble in what is right and teaches them his way. All the ways of the Lord. For the sake of your name, O Lord, forgive my iniquity, though it is great. Who then is the man that fears the Lord? He will instruct him in the way chosen for him. He will spend his days in prosperity, and his descendants will inherit the land. The Lord is the most fear him. He makes his heart known to them. My eyes are ever on the Lord. For only he will release my feet from the snare. Turn to me and be gracious to me, for I am lonely and afflicted. The troubles of my heart have multiplied. Free me from my anguish. Look upon my affliction, my distress, and take away all my sins. See how my enemies have increased, and how fiercely they hate me. Guard my life and rescue me. Let me not be pushed in, for I rise to refuge in you. 
May integrity and uprightness protect me, because my hope is in you. This is the word of the Lord. So how well do you follow instructions? I'm not just talking about when you put together a toy or a piece of furniture, but how well do you follow the instructions that God has given for you to follow? Kids, you follow the instructions that your parents give you when they tell you it's time to do your chores, time to do your homework. Do you listen to the instructions and obey them when they tell you it's time to get ready for school or it's time to get ready for bed? After all, it is God who put your parents in a position of authority over you and says, honor your father and your mother. Or adults, how well do you follow the instructions that are given to you? Do you always drive the speed limit? Always wear your seat belt? Always pay your taxes without looking for loopholes as you give to Caesar what is Caesar's? Do you always follow the instructions given by a government that God has established over you? Or all of you? Are you always humble? Do you always keep your eyes on the Lord all day long? Do you look to him first in every need? Do you put him first in every thought? Do you follow his ways and the instructions that he gives you in his word? Do you always trust God, giving him not just the praise of your lips, but as the psalmist does here, offering your very soul entrusted to him in all that you say and think and do? The truth is, we don't follow God's instructions very well at all, do we? Every time we sin, we really take his instructions and throw them out the window as we do our own thing, rebelling against him. And we deserve to be put to shame for being treacherous without excuse. We deserve to be lonely and afflicted. We deserve to have the troubles of our heart multiplied. We deserve to be in anguish. Earlier this week, I was chatting with one of the members who used to train enlisted men on how to handle C4, you know, plastic explosives. And that's a job that you think you'd want to pay careful attention to the directions and closely follow the instructions because if you make just one little mistake, well, boom, you're dead. Similarly, failing to follow God's instructions for making just one little mistake. We deserve far worse than a little zap from a light socket. We deserve far worse than being blown to smithereens. We deserve more than just physical death, but eternal death, being separated from God for all of eternity because we can't follow his instructions. So in the Advent song of Psalm 25, we rightly join in to pray that God would forget and remember. Remember not the sins of my youth and my rebellious ways. According to your love, remember me, for you are good, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, your great mercy and love. God, forget all those dumb things that I did back in high school and in college. God, forget all those rebellious things I did this morning. God, forget about my sin. Forget about the way I've ignored you. Forget about the way I haven't followed your instructions. But then remember me. Remember me, not according to my name or my title or my position. For what do any of those matter before you, God? Remember me, not according to my good works or my righteousness. For apart from you, there are none. No, remember me, God, according to your love. Remember me according to your mercy. Remember me not because of me, but because of you, because of who you are, for your name's sake. Remember me, for you are good, O Lord. And when we pray that prayer, we know it is heard. And we know that he will remember and forget, not because of what we've done, but because of Christ's first advent for us. In verse 5, King David says, You are God, my Savior. But I thought it was interesting that the Hebrew root for Savior is 
Yeshua. You are God, my Jesus. It is in Jesus that we find that salvation. Jesus came to this earth to take on flesh. That's his first advent. And he took on flesh to live a perfect life in our place. He always followed God's instructions. He followed those instructions perfectly, never sinning once in thought or word or deed. He followed God's instructions perfectly, even when those instructions were to take our loneliness, our shame, our sin, our affliction, all on himself. He followed God's instructions even when he was instructed to go to a torturous death on a cross and to endure the most agonizing of lonelinesses, to be separated from the Father, to pay for your sins and for mine. And because of his first advent, God does forget every sin. He does remember you and me in his love and in his mercy. And he teaches us that grace. He instructs us, poor sinners, by his word. Remember, O Lord, your great mercy and love, for they are from of old. From the time of the prophets in the Old Testament, from the time all the way back to the garden, where God spoke that promise to Adam and Eve, he would take care of their problem of sin. There in the Word is where we learn of his great mercy and his love and of his instructions to us. And what are those instructions as he guides us in his ways, as he teaches sinners his truths? In a certain sense, it's not that dissimilar from what my dad told the six-year-old little me. No, you cannot help in this project, but you can just sit there and watch. Do nothing. It's already been done for you. His instructions aren't do this and do that, but to trust in me. Trust in him and in his promises from of old. Trust in him and in his promise of your salvation made complete in Christ. Trust in him and in his promises that he will be with you always and work all things for your eternal good. You know, I think the NIV has kind of an unfortunate translation in verse 10 of our text where it reads, All the ways of the Lord are loving and faithful for those who keep the demands of his covenant. You see, literally, those who keep the demands of his covenant are those who keep his covenant and instructions. The NIV almost makes it sound like more law, but I think this is really a verse of pure gospel. We keep his covenant when we cling to the promises he's made us of his grace. We keep his instructions when we don't try to help, but only look at what he's done. We keep both when we put our trust in him, when we keep our eyes fixed on him, and when we make our Advent song, to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. In you I trust, O my God. So trust in him. When you're lonely and afflicted, Trust in him when you're feeling depressed and the troubles of your heart are multiplied. Trust in him when you're surrounded by your enemies. Trust in him, especially when you're feeling afflicted by the shame and the guilt of your own sin. Trust in him for forgiveness, one for you by his first advent when he took on flesh to live and die for you. Trust in him for deliverance that will come fully at his second advent when he rescues us from this life of sin and from every trouble and pain of heart and soul. And trust in him as he guides you, as he comes to you still in the word and in the supper. Trust in him as he instructs you how to live for him in thanks, but especially as he instructs you to put your trust in him. We wait, we watch, and in him we put our hope. And while we wait, we sing to him our Advent song. In Jesus' name, dear friends, amen.